Good afternoon. How you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing great. Nice to be here again. Uh, a huge shout out to our Gamecock fans on showing up on that uh, game on Saturday un under the weather conditions, and I was actually impressed at the you know just how loud it was and, and the participation, and uh, it played a huge role. Uh, obviously, it's a brand new week playing a, a SEC opponent. Um, obviously, a physical football team that comes in and has some battles against those guys the past couple of years, and looking forward to Saturday night. Clayton, how much does confidence play into this week? Are you coming off a couple of pretty good performances, and then you guys obviously beat Cl uh, Kentucky last year at their place thanks to a turnover on their first play. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, confidence is always an important thing. I mean, you want to you want to have your guys' confidence as high as possible whenever they face an opponent of, of this caliber and of really any team. So uh, that's obviously through practice and through prep and uh, coming off a win definitely helps the confidence, but. That's not going to go out and get the job done for us on Saturday. We have to do a great job of preparing and and are ready to attack on Saturday. Obviously, the win's at the top of the list, but when I guess folks look at the stats and how many points y'all gave up, how how nice was it for you guys as a group to to have that type of dominant type of outing? I mean, we would do, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. So uh, we work hard. Our guys work hard enough, and it, to me, it was more exciting. To, just to see our guys' ex expressions on the sideline when they felt like we finally put our four quarters together in a football game because of all the hard work they put in. And um, just watching them smile on the sideline in the locker room after the game and then just coming in on Sunday, understanding, you know, look at the goal board and, and you pretty much hit most of them. But to me, obviously now it, it motivates us even more to, to, to continue that that stretch and, and that run. And But to me, it was really more about the players, just how happy they were. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. so. I was good, but I wanted to make sure they were um, good as well. But it was great sitting on the sideline and just watching them smile and have fun and, and watching everybody shine. So one of our sayings is one shine, we all shine. So I thought they all did a good job of just playing together and having fun. Going up against a guy like Ray Davis, I mean, just what have you seen from him yeah. this year on film? How does he compare to, you know, maybe when you guys played him last year? Yep, uh, obviously, you know, I think he has a lot of good pieces around him that makes him stand out even more. He's a really good back. Uh, Great contact running back. You know, it takes obviously two guys, and he's such a he has a great uh, low similar uh, gravity, and you know he, he's a good SEC running back. I mean, every week we face one of those guys. Every Sunday we do our little player profile on each back. It seems like it's the same thing every week in the SEC. Uh, he's fast. He's big. He has good good contact balance. He got a great stiff arm, a, a nice dead leg, and it's it's every week. Jamal Weiss got in there more, was involved in a fumble there in that fourth quarter. Where is his game now versus where it was at the start of the season? Yes, uh, Coach Robinson does a good job of trying to develop guys and trying to make sure they improve every week, every day. Uh, his role is still the same. You know, obviously we was up some, so he was able to get in and be productive. He was ready. Um, I, I think that's more important. Him and Dre Martin both got in, so it was exciting to see those guys get in and battle. Clayton, I don't want to jinx it, so <laughs> I'll use past tense. We were talking with, with uh, Dal Loggins, but you guys were able to create a lot of takeaways these last two weeks, and not just takeaways, but immediately after the majority of those, it's turned into points for the offense. I know that's something that you guys were stressing stressing on a lot mm -hmm. over the last couple of weeks when you guys were in your little drought, little funk. How do you guys continue to keep that going? I know you guys make it a emphasis at practice, but certainly going up against the caliber of teams you have these next two weeks, I'm sure that will be towards the top of the priority list for you guys? Yep, it always is. Uh, winning the turnover battle as a football team is is definitely one of our top five things that we discuss every single day. We have to go after the ball, understanding that Kentucky doesn't run a ton of plays. You might not have that many opportunities. So you have to be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, and, and do it violent and make sure we are all on the same page. And I mean, turnovers don't just fall in your lap. Uh, you create them. Uh, you have turnovers on downs, you have takeaways. So. In the defensive room, we count turnovers not on downs as turnovers. We don't count them as takeaways. So we want more takeaways, and we got to do a great job of getting to the ball. Um, tips and overthrows, we got to get those. And if the ball does bounce our way, we got to take advantage of it. Hey, Clayton, hope you're doing well. Just wanted to ask you a little bit about Bam Martin Scott. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he led the team in tackles over the weekend. Yep. I think he had 13 maybe. What have you seen in his progression these last few weeks, and just how well do you feel like he's kind of adjusted to that, that package you guys run with him? Yes, Bam, is, he's, he's one of those football players that a really good athlete, can do multiple things, and we just continue teaching him the game and teaching him multiple packages. I think he's doing a really good job. Uh, 
you know, the best thing about Bam is that you see him hard. He's work hard at practice. He's always here in the spring. He's here in the fall. I mean, he's always a hard worker. Just, you know, haven't had a chance to really break through the lineup. And now we're, you know, we're putting together this package that we hope to continue to grow with. And I think that he's, it's perfect for him. And uh, he did a great job on Saturday for sure. Uh, I guess kind of on the Bam thing, it seems like <clears throat> he, like guys like him who are lengthy, athletic, are really thriving these last couple of weeks in that three three five. What is that doing for the pass rush? And is that something that you kind of have to just monitor week to week based on the opponent and, and what their strengths are? Uh, good question. Uh, it definitely has to be monitored week to week on, on um, depending on the scheme you use or going against the offense that you're going to play against. But uh, we definitely do a good job of trying to make sure that it, if, it, if it fits, it fits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But uh, I think that Bam has uh, definitely helped us on the pass rush. And just, I mean, he's gotten two sacks. He got one in the Tennessee game. He has one, uh, obviously, last week. And other pressures, him and him and Willis, just helping, you know, helping us trying to create, you know, get quarterbacks off the mark, trying our best to affect the quarterback in any kind of way and speed up the clock. So guys like him, offenses don't like twitchy guys rushing. So he's a twitchy dude and uh, definitely – on, probably on other teams' radar. Uh, with Kentucky's receivers and, and what that group, yep. what kind of challenges does that group provide for you guys? Yeah, it's, it's a strong group. I think that all those guys can run. They are very good route runners. They all catch the ball. They all have the big play ability. They've all made big plays at Kentucky. Uh, a couple guys are gadget guys. So I think that group is a nice – they kind of seem all the same. Dane's the one that's a little bit taller, but for the most part, they're all in and out of their cuts. We have to do a great job of covering. We have to do a great job of disguising. And uh, those guys also can uh, do a great job of underneath intermediate routes. They block well. It's a good group, so it's a great challenge for our defense coming up on Saturday. Clayton, Dow was just in here talking about how the schedule over the last two weeks has changed leading up to game time, I mean, whether that be meetings, routines, going to the movies the day before the game. I know that there's obviously multiple factors as to why the defense played as well as it did last <laughs> week. I'm not saying it's because you went out and saw Forrest Gump or whatever, but how, how much has that maybe helped the defense a little bit, whether just changing things up and is there anything else maybe that Dal didn't cheer that you feel like has helped the defense out a little bit in terms of just the routine? Uh, that's a good one. Um, to me, I, I mean, I don't really have an answer for that to, I mean, to execution. <laughs> Getting on the field on Saturday in between the white lines when the whistle blows and the clock starts. Execution, being where you're supposed to be more than, more than not, tackling. Uh, playing with great energy, great passion, playing for one another. Those things have been brought up a little bit more, and I've seen guys have a little bit more passion in the way they play. I mean, you can go to the movies or you cannot go to the movies. There's plenty of times we did not go to the movies and play well. So the changeup is good. I'm not saying it's not worthy, but it's definitely good. But the reason why they played better was in between the white lines when the clock started. I think there's time sometimes – the DBs are young, and there's times where they've given up big, big plays. But on mm -hmm. Saturday against Vanderbilt, I mean, aside from the the one touchdown where it could have been a penalty, um, they played really well, and it seemed like they were just kind of breaking up passes, reading the quarterback's eyes. What did you like from your secondary on Saturday? One, I, I just love how they looked on the sidelines. I mean, it's 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 different when you're not giving up passes and you're not chasing other men down the football field. You know what I mean? you definitely feel better about yourself. And they play with energy. They play with juice. There was way more communication. Just their eyes and just their demeanor was, was different. They, was, they, felt, they felt different. Uh, I saw them diving for PBUs. They were diving for balls. And they was you know, chasing guys, running past guys to get to the ball. It just felt different. And um, I, I was happy to see that for those guys because, you know, it's, 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 that's a tough life when you, cho when you choose to be a defensive back. Uh, <laughs> Because you could have been anything else. You, at one point in your life, you wanted to be a DB. And now, they, they, to me, they're growing up from it. And growth is big. Growth is an important thing. So as you watch them grow, as a coach who's been in their shoes, you understand that's important for them in their future. So I'm all about growth. And if you, if you have to go through hard times, sometimes you do. And watching them grow and watching them come out of it, it's yesterday on Saturday was big. We have another challenge this week. So I'm excited to watch them take another step. Thank you, guys. See y'all. Take care. Nice seeing y'all.